Um, it was actually kind of kicked off a few years ago by a TCNA five-star contractor when he was standing next to one another. And he looks over at me, we bet it, we bet it uh, you know, put it on the back, put it on the wall with a half-inch notch trowel, a lot of thin set, a lot of mortar, puts them together, you got about a quarter inch to Wireless. <laughs> and uh, you know a wireless. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, double double bed installation. You're looking at about a quarter inch to five sixteenths bed and board when you feed it in. And he looks at me. And he's like, "How long does it take to cure?" This is five years ago, and I'm like, Good "Question." You know, I'm like, "You know, you say 24 hours, 42 hours." Because he's like, "Well, what about moisture getting behind?" Because it was on a waterproofing. It's actually on Curdy at the time. Well, that's a great question. He goes, "Is there any other thing you can do?" And I was like, "I got an idea." So Bostic is big into uh, other types of installations. We do like soft flooring, and we do a lot in the uh, wood, the hardwood flooring industry, right? We do a lot of seals, and our business we do. Basically, you probably have never been without Bostic in your life. If you sat in a truck, a car, a plane, a train, those are all glued together with Bostic adhesives. Okay, so we're really big into panels and how panels are bonded, exterior and interior on planes and trains. If you think of a train going down the road, there's no rivets holding that stuff together. It's all bonded with the which got me thinking about it. I'm like, it's a big ass panel. We could probably stick that to a wall with no problem some of our adhesives. So let's start playing with it. So I invited this contractor to come in and uh, we started uh, playing around. I had some formulations mixed up. It says, what do you think of this? And he's like, it's pretty different. And then I got involved with a couple of tile manufacturers, kind of kicking around the idea. And lo and behold, we launched this product five years ago now. It's been a huge success for us. I am, just to say, I'm a fan of... All right, number one rule, it's not cement, okay? So if you got, a, every crew's got a guy that's messy, right? You, oh. you're the messy one? Yes. You don't get to play with this. <laughs> right? I'm just gonna be honest, you know, this, this product is, uh, if you got a guy that's phenomenal, guy's generic, um, if you have a guy that's phenomenal at trawling inset, he's like wicked fast, probably not the guy for this either. Okay, this is a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. You're only having to do one side. You don't have to do the wall, so you're not doing this stuff above your head. You just sit here like on a table, just combing it out. If you go to a thin set class, you do this, you're combing it out, right? But this one, I like combing it in, pulling up, halfway pulling up. We call it the mohawk in the middle. You can see a little mohawk be created. You pull it to the edge, you get a chance of stuff being a mess, okay? You can see, the other thing you don't need to do is you don't need to key it in. I'm gonna need more. The first thing I do, Basically, all I do first is start gauging it out to the areas, getting up to where I want it to go. Now, notice that he's using a Euro notch trowel. We also recommend, um, I believe it's a half by half B notch, yep. but this is not something you're doing with a normal tile trowel. Make sure you follow the directions on the bucket. You want to make sure you get the right coverage. We do have spacers. You see the black specks. Those are pieces of rubber that actually guarantee the correct thickness of the product. But still, the recommendations are on the bucket for a reason. So please pay attention. Also, the way you travel, you don't travel out of this, right? You always travel from yeah. the edge.
what is the open time of this? 45 minutes. It's a good question. So. 45 minutes from the time you start spreading. Oh, okay. You got plenty of time. You can go have your smoke break, take your emails. <laughs> I know tall guys, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and these days when we had no uh, internet on the job site. <laughs> and we were productive. <laughs> What do you clean it up with? Uh, you can do, in a wet state, you can do basically paper towel. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a mess on purpose to show you what it is. If it's cured, razor blade, or just a, a scrubby pad. Actually, truthfully, a guy showed me once, he took a tennis ball, stuck it on a stick, and he was rubbing where he couldn't reach. He was just rubbing it off the tennis ball. No, this is what we consider an easy clean adhesive. Okay. Because I couldn't make something that... We can test it for you if you want. Don't worry, you guys can do that later. And I, w I suggest, you know, it's always good to get hands-on with tools, especially here. I hate seeing guys go out and, you know, the first tile job they ever get with page pour some panel and the first time they ever cut or use a tool or a rack or anything was on their first job. I mean, my gosh, you guys are here. Take advantage of So what's the cure time on this? Cure time is basically four hours. Full cure is 24. Okay. So basically you have, and so guys always ask me, like, how long do I have once I stick it on the wall? Right. Because, you know, you get it on the wall, it's going to start to soak in and bond that thing. You got about 30 minutes. Okay. And to move it, you need to uh, put the rack back on it. And once it's stuck, it's stuck. But you can move it about a half inch. So you're not checking your covers like you would on a... There is not a chance that okay. we'll get this off the wall. Check it. You use it for it. It's a highly modified thin set. Uh, 35, to 40, 30 to 45 minute open time when you start spreading it out. PSI is around 300, 375 for porcelain. Uh, you got a water range on this between five and six quarts of water. Uh, open time is uh, exceptional. Pot lights have always been a, uh, kind of a, a trademark, really good thing for Boston. Good mix and a good pot light, you can re whip it and reuse it for about three hours. So it's pretty exceptional for this. Uh, this is certified for gauge porcelain panels as well, interior, exterior for this. Okay. Anything I missed for you? No, 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 no. I mean, one small thing, all of our thin sets, just kind of a nice hat. None of our thin sets require a flake pan. So you mix with the water range, whether you want it thin or thick. You mix until it's creamy, lump free, and then you go. You don't have to wait for that slake time. Did you guys know that slaking is actually only used in North America? 
You go anywhere else in the world, they look at you like you're crazy. They're like, what are you talking about? Sure. I don't know if you guys want to talk to us. All right, so you see that he's doing directional trolling? Keep going. Oh, love it. Good job, good job. Keep going. So directional trolling, has it, you, very few haven't been doing this. If this panel is long, there's like a wider panel. This is a narrow panel, so he can do full stretch across it with an arm. If the panel is wider, you'd be going from the middle out, middle out. This is not a, a rainbow pattern back and forth. Straight trolling. You don't want to have, uh, let's just say, like, you know, if you want to get really critical about it, when you start seeing spots like this, they have to start and stops. You don't want air to get trapped in. So as they're beating this in, they're going to be pressing it into another combed out layer that's going to be on the wall. You don't want air gas in spots where air can stop. So you want traffic, the probably just to go like the shortest distance of the panel that you can get it. And as you beat it in, you start from the middle and you work your way out, work your way out, work your way out, and you're basically working your way That's down the panel to, do, to get it to work. That's it. All right, so uh, I know the tin set is pretty much across the board with all the manufacturers. You uh, spread the tin set on the panel and on the wall. Yep. And you do it the same direction. Because once you start crisscrossing, then you have trapped the air right. in there. So. It's always, I mean, it's beneficial if you take the narrowest length of the panel. Now you've got a panel like this, you know, pick one and then make sure you're going to comb it out exactly because you've got a kind of a strange angle here. Make sure you're combing it the same way. You don't want to do this on this panel and this on this panel because then you have air pockets. Yeah. Also, when it comes to floor installations, when you guys put those big pieces down, don't be afraid to walk on them. You're not going to break. If you have a full coverage, you really, you want to walk on them, step on them, and okay. How this going to happen? Right. You know, this, let's say this, this uh, fabric, let's say this, this uh, whatever, let's say ram board, is down. Basically, you know, don't step on the edges to walk into it. You know, step to the middle. You can walk it in, walk it back, and then basically, and you look kind of funny doing it, but this is how you walk the pile. And you just keep doing it. And then the next one that comes along, you get your clips. These are MLTs. Put your, your clips in. Comb it out, bend the next one, start into it, work it back, work it forward, work it over the edge. You'll see a little cement ooze up through that corner. Take a knife, scratch it out, then put your clip on there, tighten it up, and you get them level. And leave it. Okay? Which way do you scratch that thin set out on the edge? Sit again? Like on your fresh edge? On the fresh edge? Yeah. Keep it out. Because you exactly. want it to burn. You never want to. So, you know, like. Stop uh, and pull. Yeah, yeah, yes. Basically, stop and pull, stop and pull. Don't take your, your margin trowel and strike along the side. You just they strap all the air. Bingo. Bingo. Okay, so you can't wash out the color. Say so whatever color the grout is, that's the color of the grout junk when it's cured. Okay. So, that's a big thing. When, that's why premixes have become so so big in the marketplace, is they, they kind of help alleviate that. Uh, color inconsistency that contractors are dealing with when the homeowner doesn't like the color, come back and you're like, you know, door was open, now you got grout that does a little, a little lighter here than it was in the corner that was darker in the shadow. You just get color difference. So this type of product does eliminate that. You'll see it though, and this is where everyone gets a little spooked about it. You start seeing it, you see that white, creamy, milky look on there? That's the binder, okay? Ours is a urethane-based binder. It's a urethane acrylic blend, okay? It's actually the reason that we have such kind of high durability and high um, exposure to extremes is the company that owns Boston is called Arkema. Okay? We're owned by a multi-multi-billion dollar chemical company based out of KOP down in Pennsylvania. They are huge into acrylic coatings. Every car out there has an acrylic coating for the paint. Okay? That chemistry is now incorporated into Rub technology, okay? That's where we get this durability from. So people are looking. So with that comes an issue about I spread it all over the damn floor. I went, you know, and I went out and had lunch and I came back and now that I got this haze that's all over the floor. How do I get it off? That's our number one complaint. That's probably everyone's complaint that deals with the premix is they have this haze. If this is not a cement grout, change your method of how you install if you use a premix. I don't know who you use, I'm just saying in general. 
this is basically how I say it is. You're grouting, before you have to move a location to continue on, you should be done wiping and dressing the joints. Okay? This is not like a cement grout where you spread as much as you come, let it sit, let it get thumbprint ready, and come back in and wash the floor off. This is basically clean as you go. That's how we call it. Basically, it's a hand strip. You know, anything bigger than this, you should have cleaned it before you move. Okay? It's pre-mixed, so basically just, you know, I just give it a quick kick like this and mix it up. It's got good, you know, it's not real messy. If you got to, you know, some guys do mix it with a drill, I don't recommend it because what happens is you whip it, it makes it looser. What you do is you add air into it like a frappuccino, okay? And then you get a weak grout joint, okay? It's always fun to grout when you've got 30 people watching you, but okay, here we go. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a Packer fan. I need some encouragement these days. Oh, boy. No bites. <laughs> He flew in here just to say that to you. Exactly. <laughs> that is why I'm here. We spread the love. Someone taller than me. No, I suggest. Toss. Yeah, here. Let me get some good work. Get Jesse to do it. I didn't do it. My crew got me. Okay. He's not here. Grouting tool on any grout, epoxy, cement, anything. I need your hiker, buddy. Okay. <laughs> um, this is what, you know, I was taught once and then I, I really learned it. Look at that. He's a monster. I always felt like I was kind of tall, too. I always felt like I was a tall guy until these guys come around me. Um, is, you know, if you're, I don't know your skill level in grouting and stuff like that, but use this more than a sponge on any grouting that you do. If you're using epoxies, using cements, pebble stone, real stone, you know, Tile that's got texture to it, use it. Find a float that's maybe softer or harder, whatever you like. Use this to dress your joints, flatten your joints, instead of using a sponge. Okay? I don't care if it's a cement float or anything. Because the more you use a sponge, the more you're spreading it, the more you're going to clean up. Use this as your friend. Cut. These tools are great at a 45 degree angle, and then you cut at a 90. Okay? You know, if you're newer into tiling, I'm not sure your skill levels, always cut at a 90. But this is already cleaned up. Well, I'll take this, water, clean sponge with uh, cement grouts and stuff like that, or epoxies, they load the water up and they kind of wash it around with the pre-mixed grouts. Basically, I always had the thing, if you can shake it at someone they don't get wet, that's when you're ready to go. And you basically... Yep, yeah, that's going to stay. Don't bunch it up, right? A lot of guys bunch it up, leave it flat, let it lay flat. Dress the joint down. That's basically it. I'll let it dry. Come back in like an hour. Fingerprint dumb. Fingerprint dumb. Fingerprint soft. Um, you can come back in then, and then we have a cleaner if you need it. This this is what we clean the machine that makes your thing grow with. Okay. It works. It dissolves grout completely off the machine. Okay? It'll work. It'll take the haze off. What you don't want to do is open up the bottle and dump it on the floor and then wipe the floor down. This is a mist it, let it sit, and then clean it off. Okay? This is a very strong urethane solvent. Okay? It also works really good for people that do hardwood floors with urethane or adhesives. Don't put it on the finish of the wood floors. Okay? If you ever pop one of these, here's a claim that we had to deal with. Someone was doing a multi, multi, multi million dollar home. They were spraying everything like that. They had this stuff oozing down the side and they put it on top of the kitchen countertop, which is a huge piece of granite. And it etched the finish on the granite. So, you know, smart with this stuff. But that's basically, uh, yeah. Oh, 
cut this E through a plastic, let's say you put a plastic on the countertop oh, and then it's you over spray. So, it's a plastic. Uh, yep. It's just like urethane finishes, because some you know grants have that sealers on stuff like that, it'll make an etch on. Alright. That's why I love Windex. Number one recommendation. If you really got a job you gotta take care of. Yeah. Will your grout pick up the blue? No. Nope. colors? Nope. We've done that's so why I did a lot of testing. The best one you can find, if you can find this, I don't know if this is Windex, it's very good. Um, but Windex makes it clear. That one's awesome. I almost went to them to see if we could probably label it, but they like said no. So, anyways, Windex, great product. All right. I don't have a like a, a chamois towel. Do we have a chamois towel up here? Any kind of like a, I just any kind of a microfiber or anything yeah, you got. There's one out on our table. If not, I'll just use one of your t-shirts. There's one out on our table. Yeah. I guess it's yours. Yeah. That's what the purpose is. Yeah. 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 Ye
you have questions, call Dorian. <laughs> um, I actually, the last event I was just at, I was down in New Orleans, I brought a big stack of business cards and they all vanished. I don't know if someone took them your way. I don't know. It's probably the Arctic guy. <laughs> but uh, feel free to, uh, you know, contact us. If you call the 1-800 number on our stuff, you can get directed to me directly. So any questions, feel free to reach out to us.